All right, I'm going to do a quick demo of using vRealize Automation with vSphere with Kubernetes to create an on-demand Kubernetes cluster through a catalog request. Um, so this is going to deploy a supervisor namespace, a cluster with inside that, uh, and then set everything up and then actually integrate it into CodeStream for use with other pipelines to deploy microservice applications. Uh, so let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and submit the request. So I will call this um, at team one dev. And then this is going to go on my production project. And then I've got a toggle that says, hey, do you want to uh, integrate this into CodeStream as an endpoint? Yes or no. So we'll say yes to that. And then we'll call this one uh, cluster app one. And we will hit submit. So this is uh, what this is actually doing is actually kicking off a code stream pipeline that's going to go through this whole order of operations. So let's dive into that pipeline and see what's going on. So I'm in code stream and here's the pipeline that I have. Uh, so we'll go in and this is con this one's made up of four stages. Uh, first, it's to create the supervisor namespace. And so the first task that I have here is it actually deploys a blueprint from Cloud Assembly that goes in and creates that supervisor namespace. And so if we take a quick look at that, you'll see that I'll click on the supervisor namespace blueprint. It's very simple. I mean, I can drag over this namespace. Uh, it has the, the code for me. I have an input. Uh, that allows them to, of course, add, add the name for the namespace, which you saw in the request. And then I've also got it tagged uh, to go to a specific supervisor cluster within vSphere. Now, I've got multiple supervisor clusters, so I could have had this where they selected it um, at uh, deployment time to go to a specific cluster. Maybe you have one for dev, one for test, etc., I went ahead and just hard coded it here into the blueprint. Um, but like I said, this could have been a configurable option at the request time. Um, I also then update the supervisor cluster with a storage policy. I'm actually using a custom integration for that. It's a simple Python script that just went in and, and attached a persistent storage policy to the supervisor namespace. And then once that's done, uh, the supervisor namespace is uh, created. I log in uh, using a uh, CI job with inside of CodeStream that has the uh, vSphere for Kubernetes CLI in it, creates a login script, logs in, and then I deploy my Tanzu cluster. Now, I could have, again, uh, had a bunch of different options and, and allowed them to select how many worker nodes or how many um, control plane nodes. I could have even done version if you wanted to. Um, I hard coded those for this demo, but you could have, uh, you know, what I did allow them to do is obviously select the supervisor namespace and then uh, name the cluster. Uh, so this is just, you know, again, you can have multiple options for them to select at request time or limit it down and control it based on what you want them to have. I then wait for a bit of time for uh, the cluster to complete. Um, and once that cluster is done, then I actually log back in to the supervisor namespace. But this time I'm switching into the context of the, the Tanzu cluster that I just deployed. Once I'm in that context, then I can now create a service account. You'll see here again, I have hard coded the name of the service account to dev admin, but I could have apps, you know, let them put their own uh, service account name in if you wanted to, whatnot. And then at that point, um, I bind that service account to the admin role in the cluster. Again, could have been something that you made optional for them to select what role they're allowed to have within the cluster. Um, but, you know, for this example, again, I just want to have a service account that has admin role. Now, once that cluster is created and I've got the service account and the role binding, uh, then I can go in and collect some information about the cluster. So I, I get the API server address the fingerprint um, for the certificate, and then the token for that service account that I just created. And then I utilize that information to create the endpoint in CodeStream for, again, I can use in a pipeline later on uh, for some other you know, continuous delivery uh, integration uh, style deployments, uh, which I plan to do uh, towards the end of this demo. Um, so with that, 
Uh, oh, and the last thing we have here too is we have a notification that goes out to the requester that um, basically gives them all the information for the cube config. So they should be able to go in, populate the cube config with the information in that email that they get, and then immediately start interacting with the new cluster that I put in place. Okay, so let's look at the execution and you'll see here it's running. Uh, at this point, it's created the supervisor namespace and updated it. So if I pop over to vCenter and I do a quick refresh, you'll see here that my app team de one dev uh, namespace is in place. Uh, it put the storage policy in place as well. And in just a second, it should start populating the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so you'll see here it's logged in. It's now creating that Tanzu cluster. Uh, and we should start to see that populate here. Yep, and there it goes. Uh, so now at this point, it's gonna sit for a few minutes and uh, wait for that cluster to complete. All right, so the cluster is built. So if we go back over to vCenter, we can look and see that we've got our uh, control plane IP, we've got our one control plane and three worker nodes as we specified within the YAML when we deployed the cluster. Um, and we can come back and start to look at what's going on next. So now it's logging in, uh, back in into the context of that cluster uh, so we can go through the configuration of the service account and the role binding. So service account has been created. So you can see here, we've created our dev admin service account. Uh, now we will go through our role binding. Role binding has been completed and you'll see we've got our bound uh, to the admin role for the cluster. Um, and now I'm collecting that information uh, from the cluster. Uh, and you'll see here, once it's run, I've collected my information from the cluster, which then I can pass uh, to um, CodeStream to uh, create it as an endpoint. Um, so this should run fairly quickly here in a second. It has, now the pipeline is completed. So uh, I have an endpoint, uh, which we basically use the cluster name for the endpoint. So if we come over to our endpoints, you'll see here I've got cluster app one. Now that is available um, to be used within side of CodeStream. So now what does that mean? So basically, through the request catalog, uh, uh, someone could go in, deploy a supervisor namespace, get a cluster with inside of that namespace, and have it integrated into a CI tool, which is CodeStream, uh, to be able to start deployments. So now I could easily, now I could do this through the API, I'm just gonna do it manually here. I can pull uh, a new pipeline in that I might have from a, a repository, uh, and I can go ahead and import that and you'll see that it created a new pipeline. Um, and so before we can enable it though, we're gonna go in and look at, so you'll see here, I don't have anything for the cluster, but I'm gonna go ahead and for each one of my commands here, set it up to where it uses the new cluster API or the cluster uh, that I created from the pipeline. And now again, this, this would be done obviously programmatically, but for sake of the demo, just showing, you know, setting this up that that way. And that should take care of it. Oh, one more. All right, and what this pipeline does is basically deploy an, an, a simple microservice application, sends an email uh, uh, out to um, me um, or the requester. Uh, and then, you know, after the approval and testing of the application, um, you I delete the namespace and delete the application. So we can close this and we'll go ahead and enable that. And then we'll run the pipeline and I'll call this new app namespace. This is just the namespace. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the username. Uh, I use, I use the username in this pipeline as the namespace to deploy the application into. So we'll go ahead and run that. And while that's running, I'm also going to show you the email that came uh, from the pipeline. 
So like I said, I have a simple, uh, you know, informational email that goes to the requester that says, hey, deployed this cluster. Here's how you access the cluster. Here's the token and the fingerprint, all the things that you would need for the cube config to be able to uh, utilize this cluster. Um, so that's what's coming from uh, to the requester again, that probably that developer uh, to give them that quick access into the cluster that's been created. So let's go into executions real quick and we'll look. You'll see here that it's created the namespace, created pod security for uh, that particular namespace, and now it's going through the deployment of the application. Uh, so we'll let this run. Okay, so now we've uh, gotten our approval, uh, we've gotten to our approval phase. Let's just take a quick look and so we can just show for, for sake of, I've got my ingress IP address to the new cluster. I click on, I can paste it here. And then now you see I've got uh, a great little demo chat app that, from a microservice perspective. Um, you'll see I'm at the approval phase. So this would just be an example of, hey, a QA team going and approving, or maybe you've got a test suite that runs, et cetera. Uh, we'll go ahead and say, yep, that's awesome. We'll approve it. Um, and then that'll delete the application um, from that uh, cluster. Uh, and then at that point, we could, you know, I could delete the whole cluster if we wanted to, or you could start using this for deployments of other apps to test and things like that. So basically what we've shown here is a simple, easy method to create a Kubernetes cluster on top of vSphere 7 with Kubernetes uh, into a supervisor namespace where you as the infrastructure administrator control all the aspects of that request, the size of the cluster. Uh, you can give the user more flexibility to request larger size clusters uh, or even limits in, into the namespace and things like that. Or you could, you know, again, create a governed bubble uh, that you control 100%. But the simple thing is the requester just has to go through a simple request process, either through the UI or they can use the API. And then they get a cluster at the end with all the information to be able to utilize to deploy their application. Um, so this is a demo uh, of using vRealize Automation with the new capabilities with vSphere with Kubernetes. I uh, hope you enjoy this and there will be a blog on this as well. Mm -hmm.